Welcome back, everyone, to Gamescom 2016 here at the Twitch booth. Joining me is Zeke, and we have Brian from DayZ. Please uh, introduce yourself to the audience and what you do for DayZ. Uh, my name is Brian, as we covered, and I'm the uh, creative director for DayZ at Bohemia Interactive, which pretty much means that um, I don't do any of the super hard work, and I just get to sit around and come up with cool ideas. All right, well, let's talk about one of those cool ideas, although I guess this, is a, this has a lot of cool ideas jam-packed into one. It's .61 patch. Yes, yes. So there's already been a, a bit of a release about it, mm -hmm. and there's a, a few topics that I want to touch about, and I know that the viewers do as well. And the first one I want to talk about is the Predators. Yes. There's, there's going to be wolves in the game. Yes. Why add Predators? Because well, they're awesome. Well, I mean... Besides that. You know, <laughs> uh, besides Arnold and what he brought to Predators, I think we can do something a little bit different with wolves. Uh, and that's actually a... The Wolves are going to be our first run at Predators. We do intend on doing other Predators later on. This is, this is the, call it the initial functional test to see if it fits in Daisy, right? Before we go full on into other Predators. Um, but for us, Predators are about adding more of an environment threat in addition to the infected that already exist. Because the infected, obviously, they're going to be around where players are. Players tend to be around cities. Then there's so much open land in Chernars. There's forests and valleys and mountains and rivers. It's pretty much low risk out there. I mean, unless you run into another player. And what are the chances in all the, all the forests that are out there? But wolves, it adds another thing that you have to keep an eye out for. I mean, because we already have that, uh, the initial run of, of the ambient AI, like uh, boars, deer, and, deer and, and we have some foxes running around now. Um, but there's really nothing that you have to be too scared of. And wolves, I mean, it was something that we were talking talking about for as far back as, as when Dean was still in the project, is we wanted to add some kind of so, some kind of scary AI element, like environmental risk out there. And there's just so many other games out there in the survival genre I've seen do it really well. Uh, not to plug someone else's title while I'm here, but uh, if anybody's played The Long Dark, that is a perfect example of what I would just love to see if we could pull that off with our wolves. Because... The wolves in the long dark, which is, they, they scare the hell out of you. I put about 30 hours into that game and yeah. never beat it. I just I can't. It just keeps going. And, 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 and with, the, with that, I'd like, to see, um, I'd like to see our players have to start being concerned about what they're carrying through the woods like you have to do in the long, the long dark with their wolves. I'd like players to, to, to really want, like if I'm going through the forest, I should, I should make sure I have something I can pull out and engage a wolf at a close distance because they're going to want they're really going to move in packs hopefully and they're going to want to close that distance so you're going to need some kind of weapon that you can you can deal with them quick and if if at the very least take out the alpha so that they'll disperse because in some of the demos we've shown earlier the initial ai tests we have that pack mentality and if you take too much out of the pack they'll run away that's interesting yeah well, well what about the other aspects of the ai for them are they going to interact with the zombies are they going to interact with uh, other NPCs that aren't necessarily like aggressive? Well, with the infected, that I think that remains to be seen on a, on a design level, and that we want to do that. But at the very least, yes, they will go after like deer, deer cows, uh, maybe even boar. It'd be interesting to see a, a wolf versus a boar. That would be an interesting fight. But most definitely, they will pursue. Um, the other animals in the forest as well as players. Well, when you said wolves, like the, one of the first things I thought of was like, oh man, I hope you can skin it and wear the head, like, you know, Mononoke style, you know? I just have to convince my lead designer that's a good idea. He's here somewhere in Gamescom. I've been wandering around trying to find the one Slovak amongst all these Germans. <laughs> it's a lot harder than you would think. Yeah, no, it really is. Yeah. But he's no. out here somewhere. It's just a matter of hopefully he, he's, he's out in the audience somewhere and he's hearing this. That would be a great idea. I'm yeah, all dude, for it. I'd be the naked dude with just like a wolf head and a spear. Yes, <laughs> yes. and that, that really ties into, I mean, it's a little offbeat from .61, but that ties into the additional play styles we like to support. It's not just about PvP. There are people out there that just want to be, like uh, Peter likes to call it the hermit play style. Sure. That's, it's it's that Exactly. Sticking out in the woods, growing their own food, getting their resources from deer, from wolves, from, from uh, cows and such. I mean, you can already do that to a certain extent. You can make backpacks from hides that you get off of them. You can make uh, vests out of the, the, the leather after you, you uh, tan it. You can make um, uh, shirts, pants, shoes, uh, water bottles. There's a whole, th there's all these resources you can get from Clutch from bags, you know, yeah, hobo of, bags. Exactly, you know, like exactly. Purses. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so let's go on to another segment that I think is uh, actually quite interesting, and it's the spawning of the infected. That they're yes. now going to be spawning. When you finish an area, they can still be spawning in that area when you're not looking, though. Yes, yes. So that 
that ties into, um, well, not to go off on too much of a tangent, but for those that played Daisy Mod, which was huge on Twitch, I mean, that's, that's uh, I, I think Daisy Mod and Twitch I have to thank for why I'm here. It's, such, it's a well-known thing. Um, one of the, the, the misnomers, the, the con confusing points, is that people get that feeling that Daisy Mod had more infected than Daisy does because of how they were spawned in. They were spawned in using triggers, a script trigger based on a model. A player enters an area without getting too boringly technical. A player would enter an area and the, the mod the script would detect that they're within a range of a trigger and would say, I can spawn X number in this building or outside this building. And you got this feeling like there were lots of infected when really they were only where players were. And it's 256 square kilometer, I believe, map. And players are not everywhere. So there's large areas of the map that just didn't have it. And one of the first things you could tell from watching streams on Twitch at Daisy Mod is players, they'll pick up on that kind of stuff and they'll meta game it. So Daisy Mod streamers would go, they'd get their binoculars, they'd look at a town, they'd see no infected, they'd go, no players. Now they would just know that from a certain distance. They wouldn't sure, be triggered. Sure, yeah. And we, we have to change that. It's just too meta gaming. So when we put Daisy out, one of the first things that we did is we spawned our infected globally. With, with absolutely no triggers. There's no support for triggers anymore. So we had the server spread. Uh, I think we started out with 1,000 across the whole map. And uh, the peak, I think, back in the day with like a, a full server and, and players in high traffic areas, you might see four to 500 in Daisy Mods days. But they were all, again, clustered where the players were. So we spawned it globally, so you could never really tell if a player was there or not. But that, that led to players, like I said, feeling like there was less. And I completely understand that. I have 6,000 hours in Daisy, so I recognize Ooh. that that yeah, you, it doesn't. They don't feel like a threat because there's just not that much because we can only handle so many infected on an instance. Right, yeah, I mean, a thousand sure. AI is a lot. So it was a matter of looking at how can we how can we improve upon this because we don't want to get rid of the global spawning that works, preventing the meta game, and we did a system. Uh, I think starting somewhere around maybe 0 0.3132, it, it, it's all blurred together now, but we started using a, a, a central economy controlled dynamic event spawner for the helicopter crashes that uh, Daisy Mod had. We implemented them in Daisy, and, and those were added throughout the lifetime of the server without the server having to restart. The economy created that as like an event. And as we looked into what we could do with that, the many things we've been doing recently with it, one of the things we realized is that we could use this same technology to, on top of the global spawning, have infected spawn based upon where players were. So there's infected globally, but if you think about, not to point towards other popular culture, but The Walking Dead, right? You watch The Walking Dead and you see hordes of zombies in The Walking Dead. That means they're, they're, they're going somewhere for a reason. Something got their attention. Right, yeah. So obviously high clusters of zombies are going to be around where people are, their food. Yeah, sure. So we said, well, why, not we, why don't we use the dynamic uh, spawning technology for events and add an additional layer of spawning the infected. So you could say that you're, like, you're in the room or maybe you're down the street and they're near you, they spawn right next to you. Is there a sound cue? Are you gonna know that there is maybe a zombie potentially spawning right behind you? Well, you gotta keep your eyes open and you're not gonna hear, the system's not gonna just make a, a noise when they spawn, but they do, they make, they have very uh, various states, the infected. They have, you know, alerts and in, like investigating when something has got their attention. And then they have sounds they just make while they're stumbling around. So it's all about paying attention to what you hear. You can hear, you know, you're going through a building and then you just kind of hear this, like, oh, there's, there's an infected outside. And uh, it, that all ties into, like, a lot of the other tactics the players have learned around being aware of, of the, the infected and the audio cues, learning what the noises mean, this, the alert noise when, when it's made and you, real, you know it's not you, you're in a building, there's no way it saw you. That means there's a there's someone outside, something that got its attention. Sure. That just raises the tension, I think. Yeah. Well, we got a video to show uh, a little bit so we can have a little taste of, of maybe a little bit of the patch and that kind of stuff. So let's yeah. take a look at that right now. In this devlog video, we're going to go ahead and take a look 
and some of the work being done on the upcoming .61 update to DAISY. As much of this devlog video deals with the upcoming changes to the audio technology and thus specifically gunshot sounds, consider this your polite volume warning moving forward. We'll take a look at the current status of the AK-101, AUG, CZ-75, FNX, and Glock pistols in DayZ, as well as show a couple examples of the current status of dynamic infected spawning. Before we take a look at specific examples, let's go ahead and drop in on some developers who might not be as good at a gunfight as most Daisy survivors. As you can see, the examples in this devlog video are all work in progress. That said, everyone here at the DAISY dev team are all very excited about getting .61 to experimental and seeing what the early access user base thinks of it. Now that you've watched the devlog, head over to the official forums and let us know what you think of the examples provided in this video.
And don't forget to file bugs you find on any daisy branch, be it stable or experimental, over at feedback.daisy.com. I'm going to have PTSD after all my gunfire, right? I know, I know, it I love that. It all sounds so realistic. That's, yeah. that's really what the, the goal was here. Like, the technology that we had when we started out was, I mean, it was, it had been in the Arma series for quite a while. So <clears throat> we were, were fortunate, uh, I'd say as developers, we're all fortunate to be in a company that's been around as long as Bohemia and has so much shared technology and experience. And this is entirely thanks to the guys over at the Arma dev team. You know, they recognized, they knew we were working on our own new sound engine, and they said, you know, we have the Eden update coming out. It has this fantastic option and depth for sound. Let's help you implement that into DayZ. And, and there you go. It, I mean, it saved us development time, and it gives us exactly what we're looking for. Is there anything else that you want to add before we send off? Well, I mean, it's obviously it's work in progress, but um, in addition to the, uh, the audio stuff you saw, which stuff, there's, just, there's still things like subsonic um, snaps and such missing. There was a nice little... Um, little Easter egg I tossed in there at the end. I didn't cause too much, call too much attention to, but one of the, the longest running visual complaints that a lot of DAISY users and, and ARMA users have had is that light always goes through the geometry, through the buildings. Flashlights, torches, whatever the case may be, it just goes through the building. There's no dynamic shadows. You use your, your flashlight in DAISY and you announce it to the world because it's going through the geometry. Well, fortunately, our fantastic uh, Infusion engine development team with the new render from Point 6.0, they were able to finally squash that. So dynamic shadows from point source lights. It looks beautiful. I, I, I'm so excited. The entire development team is excited about that. Just going to throw in something else, a little question. Any release date? For this or the game in general? The game in general. The game in general, no. no. Uh, it's, we're specifically focused on just milestone goal after milestone goal, moving towards that final feature list. But that said, I don't think we're that far away from our beta, which is for us, Beta is the switch from, say, where we are right now, which is like 85% feature development, 15% bug fixing, and those numbers switch when we hit beta. And that's when I think you're really going to start to see a lot of the major complaints as, as Daisy players like myself will have with, with issues and bugs and such not being taken care of. That's when we're really focusing on that. And I, I think we're probably, I'd say, what, what is the eighth month? So we're probably, I would say, six to eight months away from that. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, it's, cool. it's a fantastic time for Daisy. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, Brian. And everyone, thank you for joining us. We'll be right back after this quick break.